In this example, we'll be updating purchase order detail. Um, and we'll be using uh, iterations and Groovy uh, because the purchase order detail has no QBE line selected. So let's go. Let's sign into JD Efforts. And within JD Efforts, go to purchase orders, uh, open our purchase order program, um, select a purchase order, and get the details. And here we see uh, our purchase order details. And even the line IDs are not sequential. So even if you could search for a line, um, the number is not right. And here we want to update one line, and uh, that's it, basically. So we're going to create an orchestration um, to update a single line within a purchase order. So let's in log into Orchestrator Studio and create our orchestration. So within the orchestration, the first thing we do is, um, of course, create the orchestration. The first thing we are going to do is um, to add the inputs because we already know what we want to input. We call the orchestration purchase order update line. I personally always keep saving it. Maybe that's from previous versions. You know, the new version is, is really incredibly stable. So our inputs, we want inputs um, have a purchase order. Um, purchase order number, of course, that's where we have to select on. Next to the purchase order, uh, number, we need to purchase, purchase order line, which, uh, line number, which is numeric because it's a number. Uh, next to the purchase order number, we need the purchase, purchase order, um, item number. We could potentially change and, uh, the purchase order uh, quantity. Which in this example, we are going to change. And of course, the quantity is a number as well. So change it to a numeric. Right. Next to the inputs, uh, we are going to define a variable, which we are going to use later within our Groovy script to loop over the purchase order lines. So that done. Let's create our first item within our orchestration, which is going to be uh, a data request to get a list of our purchase order lines for the purchase order that we specify. So we got, we're going to call it purchase, purchase order um, Get the purchase order details. And to be sure we are using the same view as that is used within this program. Um, let's get to the screen where we want to get the data from. Go to data browser and here it shows the view that is being used within the program. So let's close this and go back to our data request. And put in the view. Load the view. And we have one input. So we're going to filter on the order number. Select the order number. And, uh, yeah, of course, order number one is, is not beautiful. Let's, uh, let's call it uh, purchase order number. And as output, we need to have the line number. And here again, Always make the variables nicer. And we want a data set variable name. 
This allows us to loop over the list of values that we are getting. So that's it. Let's save it. And it automatically adds it to our orchestration. All right, let's uh, give it the input value of our purchase order number. Okay, so we have a list of purchase order details. Correct. Now let's create a rule to see if we have to find the right line from the list that we just defined. It's actually a simple compare between two numbers. So let's call it compare number. And the first number, the first value will be, well, if we rename it this way, we can always reuse it somewhere else. It's a simple, um, if number one is number two. Oh yeah, you need, of course, a match type. Uh, so let's say match all, which is perfect in this case. Okay, let's save it and give it some uh, input values. So we loop over the purchase order line. So that means for each purchase order line, it will run this role one by one. I'm going to compare the purchase order line number uh, with our counter. From the previous request, we're going to get a couple of line numbers and we're going to compare it with the counter that we defined as a variable. With the initial set, setup, I forgot one thing is, of course, that we need to um, put that variable to start with comparing line number one. So we define the variable here, but let's, let's initialize it at number one. For the first time the rule runs, it will compare line number one. For the second time it runs, um, we have to increase that counter. And um, increase a number is not something that Orchestrator Studio does out of the box. So for this specific, very simple thing to increase the counter, I'm going to create a simple groovy script. Um, and this is really the most basic groovy script um, almost that you can do. And we're going to call the groovy incre increase loop counter. And this is going to take that variable loop counter and add one to it. So every time the rule runs, the, the, the loop counter will have a higher value. So as input is going to have loop counter and as output is going to have loop counter as well. So it already populates a lot of default code, which is very easy uh, to modify. So we're going to have a number loop counter from the variable input loop counter. Now we define the variable loop counter. And we're going to add one line of code saying loop counter is loop counter plus one. It's that simple. And as a return, it needs to return the value uh, loop counter from the value loop counter. That's a lot of loop counters. So that's it. Yeah, give me a test value one. And within uh, Groovies, you can test your Groovy uh, while editing, which is very nice. So now if we hit test, we're going to put one in, and we're going to get two back. Let's test with a higher number, five in, and we're going to get six back. So 
So now we say if it doesn't find uh, the, the right line, um, going to just increase the loop counter and try again if you find the line. So now, if the value is true, we of course want to update that specific line. So now we're going to create a form request that is actually uh, going to update the line in uh, the purchase order. We're going to call it form uh, purchase order update yeah, line. Huh? It's actually updating a purchase order line. So here in this form request, um, going to add the P4310. Um, the initial form is the I form when you get in, which of course you can also find if you go into JDevils and click the about button. Um, but ha I happen to know the form name. And in the form name, we type in order number, as you would as a user do, click find. Then um, we're going to uh, get the first line, select the first row, uh, row number one. And we don't do not need this one as a variable, so it always it's always select row number one, and um, we would then click the select button. Then we go to the detail screen. So let's open the next form. Again, P4310, and then we pick the A form. Within the A form, um, we have to select the right line. And that line comes from our loop counter. So don't scroll down to our grid. Within the grid, we're going to say row number for update. And that's where we're going to paste our loop counter later on. So this is the row that we are going to update, which you would actually do as a user as well. Of course, we can fill in our, um, what we said, we want to be able to change uh, or the item number, or we want to be able to change the quantity. After we've changed that, um, click the OK button, and that's it. Of course, I'm uh, doing a very basic example. You can make this as advanced you would like, of course. And there's, there's like many screens in JDFs which do not have a QBE line. It needs to be done this way. So we're going to map the values. Order number is what we put in. Our row number for update here, we get the variable from our loop counter, which is increasing every time we run that rule. And we're running that rule for every line that we find in our data request. Of course, we put in the item number, our quantities, and that's it. Go back in design mode, and also, if we update the line, um, we want to increase our counter again. So every time um, this thing runs, the loop counter runs, and the next time it tries the roll, it, uh, it will increase the number by one. Let's close uh, the order. Uh, 
because we don't want to run into object reservations. Then we can try it out. Let's run the orchestration, put in order number uh, 432, our test order, line number two, update quantity. If you don't give a field, you can't do anything with it. So let's see if it actually done it. Change it to four. Yes, line number two has changed to four. Great. So it worked. So this is the example of how to update um, grids which do not have a QBE and you will see multiple UDC values and, and in multiple places. So that's for this example. Mm -hmm.